the subtle powers of the illithid call to thee. Well, in this video here today, we're going to go through all three rings of the illithid powers to discuss which ones are particularly good, which ones are particularly bad, and maybe if you want to use them, yes or no. And in my typical fashion of upfronting the knowledge of my videos, let me just kind of give you a very quick idea or, or at least answer some probably some quick illithid questions you have. There is no penalty to using these illithid powers. It becomes a plot point at the very, very, very end of the game. There will be something that'll occur that'll allow you to do things with the third and final ring, the one that have the padlock on them. And that is tied to a major spoiler later in this video. And I do kind of give you a heads up on that. If you're wondering if you should or should not use them, will the game punish me for using them? Just go ahead and do it if you want. Honestly, I think that most of the powers you could completely skip on and have just fine of a playthrough. I, I've really only ever used two, and I barely have noticed any improvement. So if you don't want to use them for some sort of role play reason, you know, ah, I just, this, this does not jive with my paladin or my ranger, or whatever it is, then don't do it. You're not missing out on anything. If you do really want to try to jump into some of these, by all means, go for it. Um, the way that these work too is the first ring unlocks two abilities in the second ring, but the third ring corresponds to only one of the abilities in the second ring. So basically you're drawing a line out from the center to that third ring. So I would pretty much look at the ones that you want and plan out the illithid abilities you want before jumping in. But really, if that's all you wanted to know from this video, kind of if they're worth it or not, honestly, I think not. I think you could skip them and be totally fine in your campaign. And that's really all you need to do. This That's the TLDR of this entire video. Feel free to shut the video down if you want, but before you do, please don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe. All those things do help me out in an absolute huge way. You can navigate to any part of this video that interests you the most. I've broken things down by the respective rings of abilities, and I've given you a, a heads up on the major spoiler coming into it. So if you, if you let this watch in progression, you won't hit any spoilers without at least a pretty prompt uh, heads up. But don't forget to check me out on Twitch where I will be streaming Baldur's Gate 3. Let's get started here on our Illithid Powers Guide. So here is your Illithid brain, loading into the game, of course. And we have our Illithids that we can then pop into any location. We just hold this down and go and drop them into a location. Now, of course, these first ones will unlock access to the ones behind them. As you can see, this one will then unlock this one, and we'll progress through them as, as needed. So the question is, which one of these are actually good and worth it and which ones are just kind of hogswoggle and the other question is will this affect your actual gameplay i don't want to spoil anything for you that's a very important thing for me because this is a narrative rpg and i will tell you that this by and large will not spoil or ruin anything of the gameplay there's not going to be a point where you're like well i wish i hadn't done that and now i can't do this it's going to happen way down the line at a point of no return so don't even worry about it do these if you want to. Think of the role play connotations of doing it and make the decision for yourself. I'm playing a ranger. I, I I should not have done this. I kind of experimented with it just to see. But if I'm thinking of the role play of a ranger, I'd probably want to remain pure and true to the nature of who I am. Or maybe I'm a paladin and I see this as some sort of just disgusting thing, but maybe I'm an Oath of Vengeance Paladin and this looks like an end that justify the means. Perhaps I'm an evil cleric, or maybe I am a wizard that goes, you know what, I, I have to explore each and every little nook and cranny of this, or a warlock that sees a justification here. Make the decision for your character from a role play perspective. Don't worry about the story and anything that this could possibly shut off. You won't have to worry about that. Trust me. Now, once we've got now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's take a look at some of these abilities. So we're going to break this down by going through the first ring of abilities, then the next ring, and then the last of the third ring in the spoiler section. So the first one I want to talk about here is favorable beginnings. This is a passive feature. This is the first attack roll or ability check you make against any target gains a bonus equal to your proficiency bonus. So this is really nice because you can use this in conversations a ton, and you just get a free proficiency bonus addition here. That's either two three or four bonus depending upon what level you are it's if you are if you were to only do one that's the one to do in my opinion it's always applicable it always helps and you just don't really have to really worry about it being build specific psionic overload it's going to do one to four psychic damage but you take one to four psychic damage every turn so i actually don't like this one a whole ton because it punishes me for using it 
Uh, transfuse health, sacrifice half your remaining hit points to heal a target for the same amount. This can be really nice if you're a character that has the ability to heal on their own, like say a fighter like uh, Lazel that can use second wind and just heal themselves. Or maybe you have a lot of temporary hit points because you're playing Will and they have that Dark One's Blessing that anytime they kill something, they get some uh, temporary hit points. Or maybe you have tons of temp hit points that you can, that you can tap into. This is nice because it allows you to heal someone and you're not, it doesn't put you at such a critical point. And again, if you can heal yourself, you can heal yourself right out of the, the, the red here. So this is more of like an oh shit button than anything else. Concentrated Blast here. You must be concentrating on another spell to cast this. If the target was concentrating, you heal as much as the damage that was dealt to it. The spell you were concentrating on will end. So you would use this here if you are a, a, a class that does do lots of concentrating. And that's really good for clerics. That's very good for rangers. Rangers can cast Hunter's Mark and they're concentrating on that Hunter's Mark being active. Wizards and sorcerers, oftentimes paladins. A lot of people can really benefit from this. And it's a great way to do damage while also healing you. It's one of the better ones on this list. It's actual an offensive capability and I really like it a lot. In fact, you know what? Put an elephant in there. And then our last one on this location is Force Tunnel. Charge forward, pushing all objects and creatures in your path 13 feet away from you. Doesn't provoke opportunity attacks. This one's nice, but it's it, you do run the risk of knocking things that you want to loot off into a precipice. So only do that if you really need it to get out of jail free, whatever it is, if you're in a really hard situation. This can really be helpful to take a lot of advantage of getting some movement and getting out of a situation or whatever it is. I wouldn't use this on a boss I really wanted to loot, but I'd use it on, I don't know, just a, just a piece of crap that got in my way. It can be a really good one to be used in that location. But I, I personally, like this kind of fits into psionic overload. I'd only use it to unlock stuff behind it more than anything. Okay, now we're into the second ring of Illithid abilities, and that starts us here with Luck of the Far Realms. This is one that I really like. It's a passive feature. It's a reaction. When you make a successful attack roll against a foe, you can change that hit into a crit hit. So this is once per long rest, and I just kind of hold on to this one. Um, I always just kind of keep it in the back pocket. I'll save it for if I think a big fight's coming up then I'll use it on something big and nasty. If I'm just kind of wading through just groups of enemies in the midst of like maybe clearing the goblin camp or whatever it is, then I'll just use it on like, okay, I'm going to use this on a caster to try to get that caster out of the fight. It's a nice way to just pour damage on when you didn't think you'd be able to. Moving into Ability Drain, this is another really good one, and it's why you would take Psionic Overload. Once per turn, when you make an attack roll, and this is per turn, this is what's really great about it. Uh, when you make an attack roll, the attacker... The attack reduces the target's corresponding ability by one. The ability that is reduced is the same as the one used to make the attack roll. So let's just assume I shoot with a bow and arrow. That's a dexterity roll. For melee weapons, this is usually strength. For ranged weapons, usually dexterity. And for spells, using your spellcasting ability. So if I shoot someone as a sorcerer, that's charisma. If I shoot him as a wizard, that's intelligence. If I shoot him, and I'm saying shoot him with a spell, I uh, shoot him with a spell as a druid or a cleric, that is wisdom. Or again, as a ranger, if I use one of my spells, that's wisdom. So you can have a lot of fun really kind of ripping up someone's ability without having to use a warlock's drain or a hex capability. So if you're playing, um, you're fighting a, a big boss and you see that boss has got a lot of strength. Well, I've got this on my Barbarian who's running into the, into the field of battle. Well, Ability Drain, boom, there goes their strength. It's a really great way to kind of get something offline for you. And it reduces it to one, which is really nice. The attack reduces that target's corresponding by one. I'm sorry, by one, not to one. Sorry, by one. <laughs> so it's like, okay, they had 22 strength, and now they've got 21 strength. And that ability is reduced the same as the one used to make the attack roll, so you're just constantly kind of layering that on. Stage Fright here, your target have disadvantage on attack rolls and take 2 to 12 psychic damage each time they miss. This one can be really nice if you know you're going to pass the wisdom roll. So that's the important thing here. This takes a wisdom save. That's why it says with save. So if they, sat, if they successfully pass this wisdom save, then this happens. You know, disadvantage on attack, they miss, take 2 to 12 psychic damage. And that can be particularly good. So having this kind of go off can be nice, but if you don't, if the, if the thing you're putting it on has high wisdom and most of like the bosses or scary things do have that, it can, it can be like a little lackluster there. So keep that in mind. And one thing I do want to say with ability drain, having this on multiple characters is key. It's like, I think it's kind of like a, um, an all or nothing type of uh, ability maybe. Uh, 
perilous stakes, invest a creature with power that heals it when it attacks, but also makes it vulnerable to all damage. I personally don't like this one because there's nothing in the game that I have needed to do this to. Yes, they heal when they attack, but I mean, if you're making it vulnerable to all damage, they take twice as much damage, so they'll get killed very quickly. Personally, I just haven't found a time when I'm like, you know what, I, I cannot break into this thing. Let me just use Perilous Stakes. Uh, but at the same time, you can delete a boss in no time because this is only happening, this power that heals it when it attacks. So you get all of your rounds of combat and they only get their attack that heals it for 2d8. 2d16 is not much on a boss, which has probably somewhere in the, in the neighborhood of 150 to 300 health, depending on what level you are. <clears throat> and making them vulnerable to all damage, they're going to take double the damage. So there's no way they're going to heal through it. So keep those things in mind. Shield of Thralls here. Conjure a volatile shield around yourself or an ally, granting the target 10 temporary hit points. If the 10 hit points are lost due to incoming damage, the shield bursts, possibly stunning nearby foes. This is a really nice one that you can use as a defensive capability. Um, I, think, I think that for me personally, because I have to get transfuse health to get it, I don't want Shield of Thralls. I'd rather take Perilous Stakes, which allows me to do a little bit more to a hard target than this allowed me just to kind of keep a target up. I, I have not been in a situation where I really needed this, but if I was playing on Tactician, this can be something that can keep a Sorcerer, a Rogue, a Wizard in the fight for longer because they've got some temp hit points and some reassurance uh, by being able to stun things on anything. Because it says nearby foes, not nearby creatures. So they can just kind of blanket stun anything around them. And to our next one, we have Psionic Backlash, which is going to be linked to Concentrated Blast, like we talked about earlier. And this one, when an enemy within 30 feet casts a spell, you can use your reaction to inflict 1d4 psychic damage to the caster per the spell's level. So this would be 1d4 per the level. So let's say they cast a level 4 spell. This would be 4d4. So it can be anywhere from 4 to 16 damage. Personally, I don't like it as much. And I mean, obviously, you can you can just do a, an elephant here and an elephant here, right? And then that one's this one's going to get you one all the way in the in the the advanced section. And we're saving that section for the spoiler section. So please, some of these things might have a little bit more sense when we see their their final progression. But not a huge fan of it on its own. Call the weak. When you bring a creature down to fewer hit points in your number of evolved illithid powers, it dies, and all nearby creatures take one to four psychic. So, let's say I had this whole entire. Let's just say I had I had twelve earlier. Let's just say it's twelve. So if I brought someone below twelve hit points, then it dies, and all nearby enemies take one to four psychic damage. It's actually a very good one if you go into illithid powers. If you're not going to go into Illithid Powers, you're like, hey, I'm going to put one or two here, then it's not going to be great because, oh, okay, they're at two hit points. It can be nice to just finish something off, but if, if you're not going to do it, the, the main thing is that it kills something outright. So putting points into everything allows you just to kind of detonate things as you get into a certain threshold. So it's quite nice to do in that regard. Otherwise, I would, I would skip it. Repulsor here, push anything and anyone back 20 feet. And if they save against this, they take half damage. Um can be nice it has to do more with the, what it evolves into but on its own not as amazing and again this would be linked to force tunnel displace creatures suffering falling damage because of your actions take an additional one to eight psychic damage this is actually really good if you take it on maybe a character that has eldritch blast like a warlock because if you knock them off of something they then also take one to eight additional psychic damage so anytime you know you're going to be displacing and moving a lot of um a lot of enemies, Displace works very well in conjunction with that. And also we have Charm. Channel the Dark Allure of the Tadpole to charm an enemy that attacks you, preventing them from attacking you until their next turn. I have found this to actually be very not reliable. Um, if they can't attack the Spellcaster, Spellcaster has advantage on Charisma checks and dialogue. I've just found that this almost never actually goes off. Um, it is probably related to my spell DC score. So if you're not doing this on a caster, I think that this ultimately becomes very wasteful because you're not actually getting charmed to go. It's really cool on paper, but when you actually see it in action, you're like, man, saved, 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 saved. And that's against goblins who have like no wisdom. So I didn't find it as beneficial in my personal experience. All right, here it is. This is your spoiler warning. Do not go further in this video 
if you do not want to be spoiled. I'm going to load into a save that has all these things unlocked, and I'm going to go through how you unlock them. So, do not progress forward. Shut the video down if you're done at this point. That's all you wanted to know. Please feel free to head on out. Please leave a comment, like, subscribe. All that fun action does help me out a ton. But please do not go further if you don't want any spoilers. If you're if you're into Act 3, you've seen it. So, that's all I'll say. There it is. We've jumped into the save. We're talking to the Emperor. We are at the end of Act 2, coming into Act 3. or like two and a half, really. And it's time to evolve. And once we evolve, I'm going to skip through everything he says. He gives me a little tiny special tadpole. And I open my mind to it. And once I do, what happens to me? I become an illithid hybrid. Which, for me, was a shocking reveal. Good lord, that was awesome. Watch this happen. And wha bam And you can do this to the rest of your party. You can have them all take one of these little special tadpoles. I'm going to skip through all this. And you become, you have this little special astral touched little ditty right here. And you can give this to other people to make them hybrids. So, let's now jump a look at my now addled brain to look at the final ring of abilities. And keep in mind that you can only get these if you've just gone in that progressive line. So, this spawns into these two over here, which then spawns into this or that. And let's say right here, all the way at the very end, since I, this is like my favorite line, illithid ex expertise. You have deepened your sense of self, gaining expertise, persuasion, deception, and intimidation checks. So out the gate, you just already have, you're probably going to get this around plus three, plus four to your proficiency bonus, to all of your conversational skills. It's so good. These last, the last circle is very, very strong. Fracture Psyche. Invade a target's mind and disrupt its defenses. The target's armor class is reduced by one. If the target dies while its psyche is fractured, you can cast Shatter Psyche on another target. It's just a free cast. You can just chain this thing together as long as you're kind of getting this thing going. So, um, I love this capability. Well, you Shadow the Psyche again, sorry. Um, but you can see that basically every time I do it, it's going to cost, I said free cast, it's ca it's costing me an action, and now the armor class is reduced by two, other than fractured, right? So you can see it goes from target armor class is reduced by one, now target armor class reduced by two, target dies well as inside you can cast Shatter Psyche on another target. So you just kind of get this thing chaining off and going onto more and more and more targets. It's really fun. Um, and it's kind of like Hunter's Mark. It's pretty easy to do. You're going to kill something, well, you just move it on to the next thing. Displacer Beast Shape. So if you are a Moon Druid, even if you're not a Moon Druid and you want to still go into shape-shifting, you can now. So you can transform into a Displacer Beast. A transform into a Displacer Beast that can displace itself and enemies and has 85 hit points. You take on the attributes of a Displacer Beast, but maintain your Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma scores. When your Displacer Beast drops to zero, you revert to your original form. So it's worth noting, if you've never played a Moon Druid or any kind of Druid for that matter that does any kind of shape-shifting, Think of this as free 85 hit points. You shapeshift into a Displacer Beast. You have 85 hit points to do what you will with Displace. As you can see right here, it does a lot of psychic damage. Um, and leaving behind an illusory copy of yourself. Create an illusory copy of the beast to an attack at nearby enemies. Just so you see, that's what the Tentacle Whip attack does. So you are doing quite a bit of damage with Displace. But the 85 hit points, if they kill it, okay, well you just go back to your parent form at full, at whatever health you went into that form at. So if it's at full health, you go back at full health. It's a really awesome capability that gives you the capability to just have a ton more hit points effectively. Well, it's like effective hit points more than anything. Absorb intellect. Gobble up a foe's intellect, lowering their intelligence by one per turn and healing your wounds for five turns. So one to eight, just free healing. Um, and Perilous Stakes was the, was the healing one that... that it healed the enemy while making them vulnerable. This is what really kind of helps even trip that up further, right? Now, their intelligence is dropping and you're getting five turns of healing. Uh, it's probably, what, maybe 20 total points of of, uh, uh, of health, right? If it's like the, the midpoint of one to eight. I don't know. I'm not a mathematician. But we also have free cast. <laughs> you have discovered a marvelous adaptability within yourself. Spell slots, charges, and similar resources costs for your next action or spell are removed. Refreshes after a long rest. So remember how I said Shield of Thralls is just really not that amazing to me? I don't really like it very much. Well, this is very good. 
And you'd use probably Shield of Thralls as a caster. Taking advantage of free cast as a caster is really going to be hugely advantageous to you. But you can even use it as a cleric, a ranger, a paladin, a warlock, anything that has those spell slots. But spell slots, charges, and similar resource costs. That includes your Barbarian Rage Charges if you are a Karlak, or your uh, Maneuver Abilities if you're a Fighter. Anything that has a special charge, a Bardic Inspiration, all gets free cast here, which is super cool. Um, into Mind Sanctuary, sculpt a Magical Nexus that allows those within to take actions and bonus actions interchangeably. So, you get the ability to just swap out your actions and bonus actions as you see fit for three turns. And this is nice here because, remember, I didn't really like Psionic Backlash. Well, this is what makes Psionic Backlash pretty damn good because it unlocks Mind Sanctuary. So sick, right? And then the next one here is Mind Blast. Spew forth a conical wave of psychic energy and possibly stun targets within. So now that we've seen this whole line, what I will say with stuff like uh, Call the Weak, Mind Blast, nope, and Displace, as well as Concentrated Blast, anything that does psychic damage, there are items in the game that will give you benefits for doing psychic damage. So kind of layering these in with those capabilities gives you a lot of really good capabilities too within that, right? It gives you a lot of good utility from using this. And this is a lot of damage. You've seen uh, Illithids use, you, use this on you if you're up to this point in the game. You've seen it used in Act 1 at the very beginning of the Illithid ship. Did I say shit? Ship. Uh, but spew forth the conical wave of psychic energy and possibly stun targets is always good. Stunning is always, always good. We all we get fly. That just unlocks for you, by the way. It, I didn't put points into it. It's just like uh, Illithid Persuasion. You just get fly. Um, and our final two capabilities are black hole. Create a point of intense grab. Oops. Create a point of intense gravity that pulls in all nearby enemies and possibly slows them. Five more black holes can be summoned after the spell's initial casting. Afterwards, you must short rest before casting it again. It's so much value out of one spell. You get five free black holes out of it. You, know, you just got to do a short rest to bring it back online. That is so sick. And this goes along with it. So if you pull them and it knocks them off of something and it causes fall damage or whatever it is, well, Displace is going to trigger with that as well. So they kind of run hand in hand with each other. Then lastly, we have Psionic Dominance. When an enemy within 60 feet targets you with a spell of a level that is lower than your than, than or equal to your proficiency bonus, that's either going to be 3 or 4 by this point in the game, you can use a reaction to just nullify the spell. You just shut it down. That is sick. That is great. You can use it in a boss fight. You can just choose when you want to use this as a reaction, right? So it's really, really nice. So those are your partial Illithid final ring of abilities here in Baldur's Gate 3. And I hope you have an idea now of which ones are particularly good. I, I haven't said, hey, you know what? You got to choose this one because it really comes down to your build. Like I said, you know, like, hey, the uh, Shield of Thralls and Free Cast makes a lot of sense if I'm going with a caster, although Free Cast can be used on pretty much damn near anyone, right? Um, but maybe I'm going with someone that's going to knock things around. Well, this place really makes a lot of sense for me. Or maybe Psionic Backlash does because I'm, I'm up close and personal or whatever it is. So you can take advantage of these based off of what class you're going with, what kind of build you're going with, with that class, and how to kind of put all of these abilities to really pop off for you as a partial illithid. But if you have any other questions or you have any suggestions on which one really work well together with certain builds and classes, please let it be known in the comment section below. Always about spreading as much information as I can. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one and take care.